Welcome to XC597 Circuit Simulation and Modeling. In this video, we are going to introduce the concept of element stamps and develop the stamps for resistors, current sources, in order to construct the modified model analysis equations. Uh, so let me start by stating the learning outcomes. Um, after this video, you'll be able to understand the idea behind an element stamp and develop stamps for resistors and current sources and use those stamps to design a program for automatically constructing the modified neural analysis equations for circuits containing resistors and current sources. So as usual, we're going to start with a resistor with, with, a, uh, with a, an example but before, let me remind you of the general form of the MNA equations. We have gx plus cx dot plus f of x is equal to b. So that's what we're going to develop for a resistor, sorry, for a circuit that contains resistors and current sources. Okay. So let us start with our example. In this case, we have a circuit, right? It has three nodes. And the only elements we have in it are resistors and current sources. So what we're going to do is we're going to write Kirchhoff's current law equations at each node, node 1, node 2, and node 3. So let's start with node 1. Um, at node 1, we have the current, so we're summing the currents leaving the node. So the current leaving node, node 1 through G1 is G1 V1. The current leaving node 1 through G2 is G2 multiplied by V1 minus V2. So that's G2 multiplied by V1 minus V2. The current leaving node 1 through G3 is G3 multiplied by V1 minus V3. Right. So these are the currents leaving the node through the resistors. On the right hand side, we sum the currents entering the node through the independent sources, and we have one in this case, IA. So we have IA on the right hand side. Now let's take a look at node 2. So we write KCL at node 2. So we have the current in G2, which is V2 minus V1 multiplied by G2. So this is the current in G2. The current in G5 is V2 minus V3 multiplied by G5. And the current in G4 is V2 multiplied by G4. This term over here. On the right hand side, we have zero because we have no independent sources connected to this node. Uh, and the final equation is at node three. And here we have the current in G3, which is G3 multiplied by V3 minus V1. So we have this term over here. And we have G5 multiplied by V3 minus V2, which is the current in G5. On the right-hand side, we have the current entering the node through the independent source, which is minus IV. So these are my three equations and the three unknowns are the nodal voltages. So what I'm going to do right now is rearrange the term to put all the V1 terms together, the V2 terms together, etc. And we end up with these three equations in this form. And once we have them in this form, it becomes easy to write them in matrix format. So I take these equations and I write them in matrix format. So we have three KCL equations Right. Each row of the matrix is one KCL equation. This is my unknown vector, and this is my right-hand side vector. Right. So this would be GX is equal to B. This would be my M and A equation, the one that we saw at the beginning. Of course, we're missing the CX dot because we don't have any energy storage elements, and we're missing the F of X term because we have no nonlinear components. Right. So it's just GX is equal to B. Okay, so now that we've written this equation, everything is fine so far, but you know, what can we learn from this? Okay, so let's see if we can gain some insight. 
So if we look at the equation, let's see the contribution of resistor G2 to the equation. The resistor G2 is connected between node 1 and node 2. So it should appear in the KCL equations of node 1 and node 2. Right? In KCL, we're writing the, you know, the sum of the currents in each element, right? So G2 is connected between uh, in, in node 1 and node 2, so it appears in KCL at row at, you know, for equation for node 1 and node 2. Right? So this is the term here that is associated with G2. Okay? And if we look at it in the matrix format, we have G2 minus G2 minus G2, G2. You can see here, so each row of the equation is KCL at a given node. So this is this row is KCL at node 1. This row is KCL at node 2. And you can see G2 appearing in row 1 and row 2, therefore. And the controlling voltages are V1 and V2. So it appears in column 1 and column 2. In fact, you can read this equation here. So if you, if you take a look at this G2 and minus G2, really is that G2 multiplied by V1 minus V2. Right, that's that's how you can read this equation very easily. Okay, so so this is G two. Let's see now. Let's say for example resistor five G five. Right, so G five is connected between node two and node three, so it appears in KCL equations at node two and node three. So these are the two terms associated with G five, and you can see in the matrix form here, it appears like G5 minus G5 minus G5 G5. So you can see the pattern here. Here we have G2 minus G2 minus G2 G2 between row 2 and row 1, column 2 and column 1. Here we have G5 minus G5 minus G5 G5, row 2, row 3, column 2, column 3. Okay. For resistor G3, it's connected between node 1 and node 2. So these are the two entries, two currents in the KCL equations associated with G3. They appear in equation 1 and equation 3, right? KCL at node 1 and at node 3. And again, you can see that same pattern, G3 minus G3 minus G3, G3, right? Because it should appear in row 1 and row 3, in KCL at node 1 and node 3. And the controlling voltages are V1 and V3. So it appears in column one, column three. Okay, so let's see now G4. So G4 is connected between node two and ground. Right? So we don't, we never write KCL at the reference node, right? So it appears only in the KCL equation for node two. Right, so that's the term associated with the current in G4, right, and the controlling voltage is only V2. Right, so you can see in the equation here, it appears on the diagonal, simply row 2, column 2, G4. For G1, the same thing, but at node 1. So you can see it on the diagonal in row 1, column 1, right, because it appears only at the KCL equation for node 1. And the current in it is simply G1, V1, right? So the controlling variable is V1. So row one, column one. So hopefully you can see the pattern now. We can generalize for a resistor between node I and node J. Its contribution to the G matrix is in row I, row J, because this, these are the KCL equations for node I and node J. And column I, column J, these, you know, the controlling variables are VI and VJ. So we have G minus G minus G, G. And if this resistor is connected to ground, so we have between row I and ground, then it appears in the diagonal row I, column I. And all of these would appear in the G matrix. Now, if I go back and see how this fits in my many equations, so my equations now are looking like this. So the, the stamps of the resistors are appearing in my G matrix. 
and the stamps, the current sources, and we will see that shortly will appear in my right hand side vector B. In this case, we don't have any memory elements or nonlinear elements. We have a C or an F. Okay, so let's take a look at the current sources. So our current sources here, so we have IA connected to node 1, so it appears on the right-hand side vector, right? So it's appearing in KCL at node 1. It appears on the right-hand side vector in row 1. And be careful the direction. We're adding the currents entering the nodes on the right-hand side. And the second current source, IB, appears connected to node 3, so it should appear in the KCL equation of node 3, so that's the third row here, minus i. So again, you can generalize a current source stamp, if you will. So if you have a current source connected between ground and node i, then it should appear in row i in the right-hand side vector, ia. And be careful the direction, so we're summing the currents entering the node on the right-hand right side. If the current source is connected between node j and node i, then it appears in two KCL equations at node j and node i, so it appears in row i and row j, and we have i a and minus i a, right, so it's entering this node and it's leaving this one. So this would be the stamp of my current source, and it appears in my right-hand side vector. Okay. All right, so in general then, if you'd like to perform nodal analysis by inspection, so the idea here is we want to have a set of rules right, where we can use these stamps. Right? So these stamps are essentially a set of rules right, that allow us to construct the MNA equation right, by simply following these rules right, without too much thinking of you. Right? So a set of simple rules that you follow and you can easily automate using a computer program. Right, so first thing is we need a reference node, and that's usually defined in the netlist. It's either you know, it's node 0 or, or, or ground, referred to in the netlist. We have to number the remaining nodes. Right? Uh, the size of the matrix. So if you have, so what we have so far, you know, the, the, the unknowns that we've seen so far are the nodal variables, or the nodal voltages. And if you have five nodes, you have five nodal voltages. So you have five unknowns, and you end up with a five by five matrix. So the number of equations or the size of the matrix is equal to the number of nodes. Um, and then we add the contribution of each element or its stamp, if you will, to the matrix equations. The resistors appear in the G matrix, and the current sources appear in the right hand side. Vector. Okay, so um, I think this would be probably better illustrated using an example. So let's take a look at this circuit and see if we can write the MA equations by inspection. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify the nodes, right? We have in this case five nodes. And then we're going to number the nodes, V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. And so we have now, we can tell already the number of equations. It's going to be five equations. So we have five unknowns. Right, so we have a matrix, and my unknowns are V1 up to V5. And we're going to have a five by five matrix. Right, so let's number the rows and columns. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, go through the elements one by one and add their contributions by adding their stamps to the matrix. So we'll start with resistor G1, connected between node 1 and node 2. So its contribution to the matrix is G1 minus G1 minus G1 G1 in row 1, row 2, column 1, column 2. This is the stamp of G1. Resistor G2 connected between node 1 
and ground. So this should appear on the diagonal in row one, column one. So we end up with G2 in row one, column. The resistor G3 is connected between node three and ground. So it should appear again on the diagonal in row three, column three. So this is my G3. Uh, resistor G4 is connected between node two and node four. So this one would appear in, again, row two, row four, column two, column four. So G4 minus G4 minus G4, G4. Resistor G5 between node four and ground. So this should be again on the diagonal, row four, column four. This is my G5. This is the contribution of G5 to the MA equations. And the final resistor is G6 between node five and node three. So it should appear in row three, row five, column three, column five. Right, so this is G6 minus G6 minus G6, G6. All right, so we added all the resistors. The rest of the G matrix is just zeros. And now we would like to add the stamps for the current sources. These appear on the right-hand side vector B. And again, we have five equations, five unknowns. The B vector will have five entries. Okay, so let's take a look at IA. IA is connected between node 3 and node 1. So we end up with the stamp of IA appearing in row 1 and row 3. We have IA and minus IA. And be careful the direction of the current. On the right hand side, we sum the current entering the node. So it's entering node 1, so we have IA, and leaving node 3, so we have minus IA. Uh, for IB, it's connected between node two and ground, so it only appears in row two. And for IC, it's connected between node four and node five, so it appears in row four and row five. Okay, and this is now my complete MNA equation for the circuit. As you could see, we did not do any thinking, we just simply applied the rules, right? the stamp rules, which you can very easily automate using a computer program. Right. But you end up with the MNA equations, which represent, in this case, KCL at every node. And you can verify this, right? that, let's say, the first row here, including the right-hand side vector, IA, is KCL at node 1, for example, right? uh, and so forth. For each row, it's KCL at the corresponding node. All right, so uh, what have we done in this video? We introduced the concept of an element stamp. We used the resistor and the current source as an example and developed stamp for them. And hopefully now you're able to write a computer program that would take a list of elements from an atlas and construct the MA equations for that circuit if it contains resistors and current sources. And in fact, this is exactly what you'll do on your first assignment.